Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over our proof by mathematical induction number 18, which is to show that the statement 10 to the n minus 3 to the n is divisible by 7 for all positive integers. If you find this some presentation helpful to you, please do not forget to give us a thumbs up. That will be very supportive to us. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get started with the proof. So uh, this is how the, the question is presented here to prove um, that 10 to the n minus 3 to the n is divisible by 7 for all n greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so this is a statement that's not an equation. So when you want to prove a statement, I'm using mathematical induction, you have to express it as an equation. Okay, so that, that's what will enable you to carry out your algebraic manipulations. All right, so uh, the first step is we're going to rewrite um, this statement as an equation. Okay, so the question is, what does it mean for an expression to be divisible by another number? In the context of this problem, let's call the statement Sn, 10 to the n minus 3 to the n is divisible by 7 simply means that 10 to the n minus 3 to the n can be written as an integer multiple of 7. In equation format, we can write that as 7 times some m, okay? 7 times m for some integer, integer um, m, okay? And also, don't forget, n has to be greater than or equal to 1. So this is the statement that we are um, expected to prove written in equation format. All right, so if we can show that this statement is true, it's sufficient to conclude that the original question is also true, since you're saying exactly the same thing. Okay, so let's start with part one, which is the base case. Base case. <clears throat> So for the base case, we want to show uh, show that s sub 1 is true, okay? It's not always 1, all right? You have to look at the inequality conditions. Sometimes it could be n weighted than or equal to 5, so don't always start with 1. You must refer to the question in order to know what your base case starts from, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, so this one is standard, starts from 1. So um, let's show that S1, the foundation of our set of dominoes, is actually true, all right? So S1 is what? S1 is what you get when you substitute 1 for the variables in this expression, okay? So it's going to be 10 to the first power minus 3 to the first power, which is 10 minus 3. 10 minus 3 is 7. Can 7 be written as an integer multiple of another number? Absolutely, 7 can be written as 7 times 1. Okay, so since I can write S1 as 7 times some integer, namely 1, that automatically means that S1 is what? Divisible by 7. Okay, so our base case checks out. We have a solid foundation. We're now going to move on to the inductive hypothesis. Inductive hypothesis. Okay, so for this one, um, we're going to make an assumption, okay, that for some arbitrary n, let's say we have a whole bunch of dominoes, and then we just start from some arbitrary number ap um, apart from the first one. It could be the second, the third, a thousand, it doesn't really mean, okay? And we're just going to create this arbitrary um, assumption. Okay, we're going to assume that uh, S sub K is true. Okay, so this is a, just an hypothe a hypothesis that we're making. It's just to give us a starting point to determine if the next step is going to be true based on the fact that any arbitrary number other than one is true, okay? So let's write down this assumption in, a, in an equation format so that we can be able to test 
if the next step is true based on the assumption that this is true. Okay, so let us assume, let's assume that S sub K is true for some integer K. Some integer K. Okay, so what does this mean in an equation format? Then we can assume that then uh, S sub K, that statement, if it's true, that automatically means that 10 to the K minus three to the K is equal to an integer multiple of seven. Let's use seven M for some integers M and K. All right, so we're assuming that this is true. That's just an, a hypothesis, okay? All right, now assuming that this is true, does that automatically mean that the next step is true? So let's write down our inductive step. All right, so what are we showing in our inductive step? Uh, what we're going to do here is want to show, um, want to show that S sub K is true implies that S sub K plus one is also true. Okay. So can we use the assumption, the truth of this assumption here to show that the next step is also true? That's basically what we're doing here. Okay. All right. So let's start with S sub K plus one and see how we can use S sub K to show that this is also true, okay? So S sub K plus one just simply involves substituting K plus one into the ends in the original statement. So we have 10 to the K plus one minus three to the K plus one, okay? Now, um, the goal is I want to generate this expression here. See this right here? I want to see, can I get 10 to the K minus 3 to the K in this expression so I can make a substitution? So I can use the assumption that that terminology, that expression is equal to 7M. And then see if I can factor out 7 from the remaining expression. And then that will show that our inductive step is also true. Okay? The next step is also true. All right, so let's see. Now, the hint here is you have 10, you have 3, and then you have 7. So I'm going to use this 3 and 7 idea to break down my 10. The 3 is going to go with this 3, and then the 7, we'll use it later on when we're factoring out 7 from the remaining term and the components we got from the um, inductive hypothesis. All right? So let's go ahead and make that substitution. I'm going to write this as 10 times 10 to the k minus three times three to the K. What just happened here? Well, this is real quick review on algebra. If you have A to the X plus Y, that is A to the X times A to the Y. Remember when you multiply exponents of the same base, what do you do with the powers? You add it, okay? So we're just going backwards. If you have an, um, an exponent with a sum of powers, you can write it as the base. Um, times the product of the add-ins and the powers, right? Right. So a times x times a times y, just break it apart. So we have 10 to the k plus one, we can have this as, you can put a one here, it doesn't really matter, 10 to the one and three to the one, if that makes you happy. Okay, so we're just breaking down this exponent using the uh, product property of exponents. Okay, now see this 10 right here, remember we talked about seven and three, this 10 can be broken up using those two numbers. So instead of 10, I'm going to write it as uh, 7 plus 3 is 10, right? Times 10 to the k minus 3 times 3 to the um, 3 to the k. Okay. Now let's go ahead and distribute this 10 to the k into the 10 and into the 3 and the 7, so we can separate it. So we have 7 times 10 to the k plus 3 times 10 to the k minus 3 times 3 to the k. 
Nice. Now, look at these two terms to the right. You notice that they have a, a greatest common factor, which is 3. So I can uh, go ahead and factor out the 3 from these two terms to the right. So that's one of the reasons why we chose 3. Okay, so we can carry that factorization. You see why we chose 7 in a second. 7 uh, times 10 to the k plus, factor out that 3, and you're left with 10 to the k minus 3 to the k. Now, do you see a connection between any piece of this statement, this expression, and our inductive hypothesis? Check this out. 10 to the k minus 3 to the k, 10 to the k minus 3 to the k. That is exactly what we wanted. Okay? Why do we want that? Well, that enables us to use our inductive hypothesis to make a substitution. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, make that substitution. We're going to have 7 times 10 to the k plus 3 times what? 7m. Okay, with the, what gives us the right to do this? Our inductive hypothesis, hypothesis, so using the hypothesis. All right, now... Um, we're not done yet. Remember, we have to be able to write s sub k plus 1 as uh, an integer multiple of 7 to conclude that it's divisible by 7. Uh, so let's just reorder terms here. Let's see. So we have um, s sub k plus 1, which is 10 to the k. I'm just rewriting it plus 1 minus 3 to the k plus 1. Um, is equal to, so I'm just going to move things around here. We have 7 times 10 to the k plus 7 times 3m, okay? You know multiplication commutes, right? So the order that you um, orient your um, product of factors doesn't really matter. You end up with the same product. So I just moved the 7 to the front of 3. Okay, so why did I do that? I just want you to see that I have a 7 and a 7 here. So that's why we selected a 7 in the first place. So at the end of the day, when I write this as a multiple of 7, I have another 7 here that I can factor out from both terms, and then we can conclude the visibility by 7. All right, so let's go ahead and factor out that 7, take out the 7, and you're left with 10 to the k plus 3m. Now, what do we know about m and k in our original inductive hypothesis? We said that they were both integers, right? So since, <clears throat> since k and m are integers, it follows that, that what? That uh, 10 to the k plus 3m is also an integer, okay? If you raise 10 to an integer plus 3 times an integer, you get an integer, okay? It's also an integer. We don't have any divisions going on here, so. Uh, okay, so what can we say then? So how about we say let uh, 10 to the k plus 3m equals uh, what integer? Let's say... Um, let's say r, okay, is equal to r for some integer r, all right? Then what we're going to have is that this statement, s of k plus 1, which is 10 to the k plus 1 minus 3 to the k plus 1 is equal to 7 times what? 7 times r. Okay, now take a look at this statement. What does this mean? This automatically means that s sub k plus 1 is also divisible by 7 because we can write it as an integer multiple of 7. All right, so let's just write down our conclusion, tie everything together. What can we conclude from all this? Conclusion. Conclusion is that by induction, We've been able to show that S sub n is divisible by 7 for all n greater than or equal 
to one. Okay, so put that little box of accomplishment to conclude our proof. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. As indicated earlier, if you found the contents of this tutorial helpful to you, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions about the contents of this tutorial or any mathematical induction question in general, just place your questions in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe for updates to other cool math clips such as this. More clips can be found on mathcutserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.